None of us said Frank Reich was the right guy to get hired in Carolina. No way. Okay. We were all very baffled by it. Yep. We are all very confused by it. We're here in Indianapolis. So we actually see and saw what happened with the Colts with Frank Reich. There for a little bit at the beginning, we're going on a run. Oh, my God, this is a guy. He was an assistant coach with the Colts whenever Peyton Manning was the quarterback here. I actually knew him very well from that exact time. He coached me. Frank Reich coached me on how to be third-string quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. He is nothing but a great guy. Everybody absolutely loves him. His history on the field, obviously the greatest backup quarterback in the history of pro ball mm -hmm. and college ball. Mm -hmm. When he was backup quarterback in Maryland, he came in and led one of the biggest comebacks in the history of college football. And then the NFL, he did the same exact thing. This is not about Frank Reich, the human being, but Frank Reich, the coach, has seemingly gone terrible in his last two stints. I said it to Sheena there. He's the first NFL quarterback in the history of the league. It's been around a long time. Long time. A lot of people have coached. Mm -hmm. First one ever to get fired in back-to-back -back seasons. Crazy. And when he got fired from Indianapolis here, it was after an embarrassing performance against the New England Patriots, but it wasn't just embarrassing on the field. Behind the scenes, what was going on in the building, his team's culture was also completely dead. Comple people late to meeting, team meetings people late to, treatments people missing and being late to. Had guys, numerous guys, gambling on and against the Indianapolis Colts who were playing for the Indianapolis Colts. Whenever you say culture, when people talk about it, it was dead and died here in Indianapolis whenever Frank Reich was the head coach. Am I blaming Frank Reich for that? No. I blame the locker room for that as well. That can't happen. The leaders that were in there, one of them now gone, mm -hmm. Darius Shaquille Leonard, they let that happen under their watch as well, which I publicly projected and said, like, hey, you guys are ruining what the Colts are. But that happened under Frank's leadership. So whenever it all kind of falls apart in Indianapolis, and then he immediately gets the opportunity again with the number one overall pick in Carolina, I think to myself, is this what Frank really needs or wants in his life? Shouldn't he have taken like a moment to breathe? Maybe just kind of separate himself from why and what happened in Indianapolis so that if he does get a chance to coach again, it doesn't happen again. It doesn't take place. And maybe his message wasn't finding the right ears at the right time. So we didn't really understand the hiring from the beginning. Carolina didn't understand it with the way Wilkes had success. Yep. And here we are sitting down, going into week 13 now, and the Carolina Panthers have another interim head coach in another year in which they're probably all eyes are on the draft in next offseason. Mm -hmm. It's a damn shame for the Panthers fans, but Frank Reich never made sense for any of us, I don't think. Do yeah, right? not for a lot of people. Obviously, you know, he's an offensive coach. He's had some success, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. Didn't go great in, in Indy, but he didn't leave with, like, a losing record either. So he wasn't, like, a terrible – but obviously we know behind the scenes some of the stuff that was going on. But then you have a guy like Wilkes. You let him out of the building. And then a lot of people were raving about this coaching staff that they put together in Carolina, you know, bringing over Thomas Brown and Josh McCown and Eva Rowe on the defensive side of the ball. And it just didn't pan out. No progress. You, you said, you know, at some point Tepper's going to have to let it breathe. But one in what? One in ten? One in eleven now? Yeah, and every stat is bad. Yeah, yeah. We're going into week thirteen, you're just not showing any progress. The team, uh, like Sheena said, they like a get right game for teams coming in there, and you you got to compete. And when you're taking a, a guy number one too, when you are in that position, you know heavy heavy is ahead. Like you you have to kind of raise all tides as well. You know Andrew Luck was brought into a situation. Obviously, it wasn't as bad as what's going on in Carolina. It was a good team around Andrew Luck. You come in and go to the playoffs. Cam Newton in Carolina, six and ten, I think, is a rookie year, rookie head coach. Like you, you, you saw that team. Like okay, every week Cam Newton is going to be an issue to come in here from day one. So um, you haven't seen that with Bryce yet, and you obviously can point to some of the things around him as well. Yeah, there's a, she mentioned CJ yeah. Stroud, the yeah. the CJ Stroud situation. Man, rookie yeah. head coach, rookie quarterback, mm -hmm. dumpster fire. Yeah, Houston not too long ago was a dumpster fire. Yep. Oh, yeah. Why they're not selling out? is because I think a lot of their fans were maybe embarrassed by everything mm -hmm. that was taking place with the Houston Texans. That used to be a great place to play. That's all you talk about. It used to be a great place to play. Now they're just sharing pictures of that place being empty. That's a conversation mm -hmm. for another time. Mm -hmm. But whenever you're Panthers fans and you see that, when you're Tepper, though, and you see that as well, yeah. Tepper's like, you see CJ, you talk about Cam, you talk about Andrew Luck. He, in his eyes, he's like, yeah, you bring in a quarterback, all of a sudden you're good. So why aren't we good? And every Monday, whenever he was having those meetings with Frank Reich and he was just dressing them down on oh, yeah. decisions, Tepper needs to get out there and maybe call the place. Yes, yeah. here, here we go. go. Dundee, there Dundee. you go. Yeah. Well, I mean, at this point, it's like, I understand, like, you got to get the coaching right, but. You were mentioning it. Like, I, he's not a patient guy. Like, guess what? You have to be patient. Like, you can't just, like, spend a whole bunch of money and then all of a sudden expect, like, well, yeah, next year we'll win 14 games. Like, that's the way it works. I'll, I'll, I'll deal out as much money as I need to, and we'll win. Like, when you look at it, and we don't know who else is going to get let go, but 
And I understand, like, for a first-time head coach, it's one of those things where you're not really in a position to pass up on a job because you don't know what the future holds. But, like, how attractive of a head coaching job is that? You know? I mean, like, for Ben Johnson, like, is he going to leave Detroit where he's kind of got something going that's pretty special right now? And who knows what opportunities he might have in the future? You don't have the first overall pick. Like, that's a massive thing. Do you love Bryce Young? Because he's the guy, no matter what. And then on top of it, is it going to be one of those things where, you know, if they get beat by three touchdowns the first week, are you going to be in David Tepper's office, you know, answering all these questions? Like, I mean, I, I understand certain Ben's owners gonna are like that, Ben's going to have options. Exactly. Ben Johnson is going to have options. Or like Slowick with Houston. Like, those guys have options. Like, why? I mean, why would you want to sign up for something like this unless you get an insane amount of money? Well, unless you're Bill Belichick. Exactly. Yeah. Bingo. He stole the words right out of my mouth. I mean, <laughs> hey, where did Bryce Young play college football? Alabama. Oh, okay. Who's the head coach of that team? Nick Saban. Who's his best friend? Bill Belichick. Well, then maybe Bill does go down there and say, you know what, Bryce, let's do this. Because the best part about the Panthers is, all of their best players aren't even on. I contract. saw you couldn't wait to get Bill Belichick's name in there. No, I, I, hey, hey, look, I, w- I want to keep Bill. I mean, if anything, that's what these last two weeks have proved. Defense is still buzzing around for no reason. Uh, I don't know the passive Paisano. Yeah, uh, Josh McCown, Deuce Daly, both fired from the Carolina Panthers uh, coaching staff. That move was made by Chris Tabor's, the new interim head coach of the Carolina Panthers, also special teams coordinator. Josh McCown, quarterbacks coach. Deuce Staley was the assistant to the head coach or assistant head coach, as well as with the running backs. They are both gone. I guess this is a normal operating procedure whenever interim coaches come in. It makes me think that interim coaches might have a little beef with some people <laughs> yeah. and say, who's who's wearing the big boy pants now? <laughs> That's why I thought, don't need this in the building. Or maybe it is saying, hey, you guys, obviously Frank's guys. Frank's the one that brought you in, offensive side of the ball. If you'd like to go get started on your next job hunt, I assume that is how they view that. But there's more changes happening. Frank Reich also spoke to the Charlotte Observer Ooh. post getting fired, I believe today, and talked about how the NFL is a meritocracy. He did not obviously perform the way that uh, he wanted to or that David Tepper expected him to. So he has no hard feelings and he understands the business, nature of the business. I think Frank Reich needs to be like a bear and just kind of go hibernate away from football for a little bit. Yeah. Weird. Without any of the Colts, not good, messy, loud, probably a lot of drama, stress. Going right into this one, the way it's gone, messy, loud, drama, probably a lot of stress. Just go take a nap, yeah. Frank, and we're very <laughs> thankful for what you did for football. That's right. Thank you, Frank. So that's uh, there's more news rolling out of Carolina. We will obviously keep our ears to the grind on that particular story, A.J. Hawk. Yeah, I, I mean, coaches like to coach, so I would imagine, yeah, at least – a year, maybe two years to maybe regain your love or passion for football possible. I can't imagine like how much it must affect you as an NFL coach. I think about every level of a coach, it would affect you if you're losing games and you're not, you know, performing. But yeah, for the fact that how it left the Indy goes right to Carolina and then it just has yet any positives in, in Carolina, like what's the bright spot? Do you have they any bright moments? One. Yeah. They won the that Texans. Yeah, they yeah. they they yeah, CJ that would we just made not the right be fun. decision. Yeah. We made the right decision. We mm-hmm. beat CJ. Yeah. Yeah. Bryce Young's yeah. the right guy. We did it. But yeah, there wasn't a lot of happiness from Frank Reich's face, body, or being, no. seemingly since he was Carolina Panthers head coach. And I guess the good times were when they were traveling around pro days. Yeah, yeah. pro days were a good time. Pro days were a good right. time. They look right. fun. You got that number one pick. You feel like you know, you can, got your pick Red of the carpet, pretty yeah. much, CJ. Bryce, but uh, yeah, it was it was it was tough sledding for my guy. You do get red carpet treatment if you oh, have the yeah. number one overall pick. Uh, well, you know, we wanted another pro day actually up here. Oh, you guys got it? Yeah, Ohio yeah. State. Come on, come, come get another one. Let's go. Uh, we want. Uh, don't you think we deserve to have a couple more meetings with them? We you we saying? want your guy to be number one. Yeah, you're you're right. Let's okay. kind of open up this building for this team. It's all good. yeah. Look at the good times. Look at the good times. Phil, filming on my own phone. Filming them. Josh McCown there. Loves it. This guy was a good player. Remember the Keekly video before the first overall pick, the pump up video? That was cool. That was cool. Let's remember this workout was good. Not good enough, though. That's right. Uh uh-uh. uh. Not good enough. Neither was throwing it to come by. Look at, look at Frank. The well, decision saying, was it? Sense. Who pulled the trigger on the draft pick, you think? We're going to find out now for sure. Frank Wright didn't even look at the throw. He just wanted to see how. Let's go back to that one. Let's go back to that one there. Hey, look where I'm at. <laughs> Check it out. Pretty good. Every single human 
Every single human watches the throw, yep. except for Frank on that one. Look where I'm at. <laughs> every, every one of them. Even Josh. Frank, no, well, where'd it go? He just wanted to see, he just wanted to see the mechanics. He wanted to see. He's got Heartline in the background too. Holy Oscar, court. I love everything about it. They're talking about Heartline getting a couple. These were good times. There was yeah. good times. Yeah, there was good times. Yeah, when they as, when they hired all their staff, everyone was like pretty good staff. Yeah, Josh fired. Great, Duke Stanley fired. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tabers yeah. was the guy everybody was talking about. He's down the head coach. Yeah, had all those quarterbacks, all that years of experience. Andy Dalton's still down there. Yeah, yeah. there's good times. There were. Yeah. There was good times. There were. Remember in training camp when all the linemen were like, "This dude's so smart." That was well, probably yeah, Bryce cool. was reading defense too fast. Thielen came Thielen, on the show. Yeah. Said, hey, he knew he was supposed to throw it to me almost like too quick. I wasn't even out on my break yet. Boom, and things on me. I'm like, wow, this guy knows. Yeah. He's too smart almost. So, yeah, we're going to be good. Good times. Yes. There was good times. CGI Panther. I don't know if they year, did that this year. year. Okay. The yeah, golf year. simulator in the locker room. Good Boom. times. Yeah. AJ? Steph you Curry. Any? Who are they playing next week? Are we going to get the uh, fired coaches bump? I sure hope. Who do they have? I sure hope. Because normally, they got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Maybe. Gettable. They just played a tough Colts team. Yeah. Gritty. They did. Baker's pissed, too, so. He's not happy. Everybody in here don't want it. <laughs> Carolina Panthers have Tampa Bay. Then they have New Orleans. Then they have Atlanta. Okay, let's go to the NFC South slate real quick. Then they got Green Bay, Jacksonville, then Tampa Bay again. At the end of the year, there's a chance. Eleven. What if they oh, win they out? They just won. Listen, it'd be good for special teams coaches if Tabor's have success. Not a lot of uh, special teams head coaches that do great. Harbaugh, obviously, with the Ravens is one of them. We're very grateful for him representing Joe Judge when he did his thing. I thought he he did some things a little differently than everybody else. Yeah. Didn't have as much success, obviously. And Tabor's has a chance here to win out. You know. And what are they going to do then? They can let him walk out of that building like they did Wilkes. Yep. Yep. No. Nope. <laughs> can't. They can't do that again. No, they can't. Can't do that again. Tep doesn't give a fuck. He is going to. If if this happens and Tabor wins out, which I pray to God it does, because then the Patriots get the number one overall pick, he will he'll tell Tabor, like, hey, great job. You know what? Here's maybe a green ball of cash, 500K. It's probably carries that around with him, and then he'll kick his ass to the curb, and he'll get the next best thing that's coming out of the NFL. Yeah, I'm sure. Maybe even Cliff Kingsbury. Maybe he brings him back. Fire for huh? Luke Keekley. That's not Luke a super attractive job, though, compared to the rest that will be open. Well, I don't they know. don't have a first-round pick, do they? Do we think Cliff is getting a bunch of ops? I don't know if Cliff's getting a bunch of ops. So if Cliff was to get an op up there. But to your point of what you're saying, you're taking that job with – there's a couple things in your contract uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. about, like – so if I take this job over this job, in this job I won't get fired 10 games in this season. <laughs> so, like, what are we – are we are we gonna make some type of promise that I'll live in Carolina for a year at least or two years? Because there's eight other jobs, maybe nine other jobs that are gonna be open. Schefter said seven to ten open. Mm. Seven to ten. That's wild. That's Most a, attractive. Twenty twenty four draft order Carolina, which ends up with the Chicago Bears. They'll do right with it.